Hello and welcome to Price Channel Scanner for the Alpha account. We're going to start searching for a fresh trade and we're going to be looking with the criteria of highest buy. So here at Thinkorswim, I have loaded up my scanner. It's got the code name is Depok. That's my price channel. And it defaults automatically to my smaller account called Types. So when you build your scanners, you can change your what you want to be, what market or what can what extra conditions you want to scan for. So here we're going to be going to category and we're going to go to all optional. We're also going to change this to $10. And we're also going to increase the volume to five minutes minimum. And the idea is that we want the we want opportunity of having the highest probability with the highest volume volume speaks and everything else follows. So once that's set up, then we are going to run the scanner and scanners away. And there we are. We have 50 out of 58. So we have it at 50. It's stocks and it's sorted by volume. And uh, you can see right here, our candidate is going to be the AMC at 144 point eight million shares traded in the seasonal index of 170 to I have yet to understand if that in the way an additional help. But that's a pretty good number compared to everybody else that low is way below the hundreds. So that said, we now go ahead and we'll send it to the chart. When we come here to the chart, there's our chart. And I'm going to now going to zoom in and give you the parameters. I will be using the short-term price channel. And the short-term price channel is the entry at the top of the price channel. That's going to be our entry. And that comes out to, let me go ahead and bring up the data box. And there it is. So the data box says that the height is going to be the close of 3071. So we're going to make that 3075. And we're going to below is 23.65, so it'll be 23.60. And that's going to be our parameters. Now you want to say, wait, wait a minute, aren't we supposed to do supply and demand? That's true, we are. But see, the, the thing is that if you notice in many of the online trading courses and other as it's polite, uh, the point comes that you go into the lower time frame, you go down to the four hour, then the one hour, then the 15. And the bottom line is, it's all gonna come out in the same context of being somewhere in this candle, you're gonna find a zone or something to get in. Now we're looking at an ATR of 373. So 373 added to this is about 2670. So the ATR is approximately two ATR, which is my ballpark. I happen to like it within, between the one and two ATR. And the objective is that we want to reach that third ratio ASAP. Now, granted, we can come down here and we we'll wait for a longer trade and it'd be more profitable, but understand in, in those, uh, those are options, not probably preaching to the choir, options have time decay. So I am buying a 90 day out, but uh, the, I have to go look at, yes, we'll be buying a 90 day out, but the problem, the, the, the situation is that I do that to avoid time decay hurting me in the first 30 days. I want to be out of this trade in less than 30 days. And I will then institute my less than 30 day rule. I reach 30 days into the trade. So let's say the trade's 125 days. For well, the first 30 days, if I'm not in profit or moving into the right direction at the uh, end, of the 30, end of the 30th day, I will look towards something to get out of the trade, providing that it hasn't hit my stop. If you notice, this is a three to one ratio. I set that up through my three to notch retracement. And that's what I have here is my three to one ratio. Uh, quick overview of that. If you, go, if you bring it on your short menu, right click, edit properties, and then you take, go ahead and pause it to set up your three to one if you have not set up three to one yet. And that is a coefficient of 0, 0.5, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over the 10. 10 
and then I color code. Red is zero is my exit, black is my medium line, blue is my entry line, and then the first ratio, second, third, fourth ratio. Now, third ratio, I do, I do slightly thicker and darker color, and that is, I'm, that is my main target. The main target is three to one. I have the other ratios there for a little bit of vanity. Sometimes the stock will run up and then hit eighth, ninth ratio. I've seen it. It's kind of happened uh, several times. So it does happen. All right. And then you save it as a default and then OK. And now you have your three, and you have, you have your three to one ratio on your Fibonacci. This upper short kind line, for those who don't know, is over here at the gear. You have to initiate this. And to initiate that, you have to go to the upper gear and get chart settings and then chart settings in the lower right corner. Go to my tools, put a click on all my charts. And then that will uh, that will put that will put that will put uh, this tool, this mini toolbar up here. And then you have to uh, it, at first it will hide on you. You just have to go up and let it trigger and the hover, then go here to the gear shift and then change out your buttons as you like. And the buttons can be changed out to virtually anything that you would like to have a shortcut to get to. When that is done, you hit done, and now it's locked in. All right, let's continue on with this trade. And uh, our entry is going to be 30.75 to 23.6. And now I have to determine if the options qualify. And I do, I do start. Let me go ahead and put the dialog box out of the way since we now have that data already. Uh, I do like to look at the um, front month. And the reason why is I want to see what kind of, uh, um, well, this is AMC, so this is pretty much sure we have a lot of open interest. And I'm also looking to see what the AB spread might be. And it's uh, pretty bad. So now we're going to go to our 90 day, which is way here at 90 days. And it's going to be a judge. The difference between March and June. Source will start off with March because it does meet the, the criteria. Also, too, we I, I had I defaulted to vertical. I need to set it to single, and now we have our single. And in our single, we now are able to see. I can tell you right now, this is going to be disqualified. Now, what I mean by that is that the AB spread should not be greater than ten percent. Yes, it should not be greater than ten percent. Um, that said, let's see if there's anything better in the front month, and not really. That's 50 cents. It shouldn't be not greater than 47 cents. This is 60 cents. It shouldn't be more than 45 cents. It should make 10 cents, 10% 10 of your ask price. That's all. So this is 75 cents, and the spread is 65. So that one never qualified, but it breaks my 10% capital control rule for risk management. So I have to employ two risk managements. One is the three to one ratio that you're going to see on the chart. And the second is not more than 10% of capital is committed to one trade for my accounts under 25,000. My accounts over 25,000, which is in my, which is my larger account, is uh, their allocation is 5%. So I end up with possibility to keep 20 trades in the larger account. And here in the smaller account, you end up with 10. The 10, works out pretty well uh, because it's less time consuming in your daily maintenance. You pop it open, you see where all your stops are at, see where all the price action ended up, and then make adjustments accordingly to your exit rules, and then shut it down. If you can have more buying power, then you gotta run your scanner to see what's available. So uh, back to the AB, the AB spread is still too wide here in the 21st, of January, 18th of January, it's not any better. Uh, March, not any better. And now, sometimes, now why do I go beyond this? It's because sometimes we'll run into a diamond in the rough. Yes, I have found, I mean, I have three leaps on my large account and I didn't pick the leaps on purpose. It happened to be that the options offered that day, the only one that met my AB requirement of 10% or less was in the year January 2023. That's correct. I'm going to have a year and, and a few, a year and a month because the expiration will be in the third Thursday of January of 2023 for that leap. Now, I do have targets set on that. So if the targets are hit along the, between now and 2023, we will take our money and run. 
uh, that is, and again, we're looking at the same situation. First, we're over budget. So we're way over past our 500. Now we are in 63 Delta. So I can go down and say, okay, let me show you we see a 14 Delta. The price is still, AB is still way too too wide. And it's one of the things about, you, you keep you keep doing this and your, your mind automatically will look at the sale. Hey, forget it. It's, it's just way too wide. I'll even go to give it last final breath. All come way down here into the 30 deltas, and it got it's getting close 55 cents, but it's still 40, it's 55 cents difference. It should be greater than 41 cents. So, right there, I can see real quick like, here is this one qualifies. But what's our problem? Our problem is that it's over, it's uh, it's over, it's past our 10 percent allocation rule. So this this does unfortunately gets disqualified on the allocation rule, and everything else down below, nothing comes close. So this would have been a real setup trade here at the at this here where the AB is only thirty twenty five cents. Yeah, that's twenty five cents against sixty four cents allocation. That's pretty good. Ten cent ten percent of, of six forty. Is 64 cents. 64 cents is greater than the difference between the AB, which is 25 cents. This is a qualifier. But because it is over our budget, we will not risk that management. Okay, so that said, let's go on and see if by chance, yeah, we can go back up. We can just go look at March just in case that there's a hidden gym in March in our lower numbers. And seeing it real quick, like I can tell you right now, my muscle memory is telling me. Uh, no, even though this is 30 cents, it still shouldn't be more than 23 cents. This is, uh, this is 83 cents. This is 60 something cents. This is 60, no, 57, 57 cents. And you quickly be able to look at this very quickly in your mind and meet automatically. And if you miss it, you miss it. Don't, don't, don't turn over it. If you better, it's better to be wrong and protect capital then be right and take a chance on an ab that's way too wide so this was was the final chance it's coming down here to the longer ones which i'm already disheartened because why it's passed by 10 percent budget of the capital well yeah this 495 is great but it's this is the this is over a dollar separation and it shouldn't be greater than 49 cents so that's how I able to say, okay, this, this trade is not going to happen. I'm going to disqualify it. Now, what I'll do is I'll come back to my trade. This is my trade journal data, which I would have filled in had this trade gone through. But now I want to do, I'm going to come in with my notes and I'm going to put in a note, a reminder to me. Not that I will discount this when I see it in the future, but I have to know why did I pass up this trade? If I look at the chart and I say, man, that was a perfect entry and it ran like crazy. And then you then you have to go back and look at your look at your notes and say why did I pass that trade up and here it is I passed up this trade because the AB was too wide. With that said, now we'll go on to our next candidate in the line. That takes us to Cisco. So we'll do the same process. Right click, come down, send, and send it away. And uh, now we'll go look at the chart and. There's the chart. There's Cisco, and uh, it's not it's not my pattern. Yes, it it hit. It's touching. It it it's broken through this the channel the price channel. That's correct. But here's the problem. The problem is this: it's past my junction point. When these come together, my entry needed to be here, and I and it or order would have not triggered. Then it would have been. It would have been here and order would not trigger. Then here at the top, it finally clicks. And then off to the races we go. And then this, so let's see, let's see what would have happened if this trade had been placed back then. And right there, 60.880 and 61.43 would have been our possible target had we been able to find this trade back here. So this trade here would not qualify because it's what it is the train has left the station the scanner unfortunately does not go and say okay did it hit the low point did it create a low point within the last several days 
and the last week or so. And no, it created it almost three weeks ago. So what kind of other trade I could do here? Um, possibility. Uh, yeah, I can do what they call a price price action high, but then that would make the stop from here to here. And I really don't, I really want to stick with the, the body, the uh, body is what I'm using now for the new trading. So Cisco is out. That takes us to Verizon. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's right. Notes. Sure. Come here and, put, and now be, we're not even going to go look at the options. You're going to come here and put 812. Train has left the station. Yeah, that's it. Done. And now it tells why did I pass up this trade? Because the train has left the station. It's already gone. And uh, I don't, I don't want to chase it. You start chasing a trade, and now you don't know if you're reaching that high end of the price cycle. So always keep the opportunities in your favor. Crazy Rise is our next target at 54.6 million shares. So we'll now send that to market. And I've been here before. Okay, we have something here. We have we have something here now. Uh, what happened? Um, I believe what happened was I failed to put the trade on because I was a little bit on the tired side. Yeah. Now, have, that's, again, back to the rules. Did the train has the train left the station? No, not really. Uh, oh, I know why I passed this trade up. I felt that this was too wide. I didn't like this three to one was going to be way up here high. And I want to keep my three to one close. Um, this three to one would have been very nice had it triggered, but it didn't. See, it didn't trigger. I had to wait for it to hit the, the, uh, the, the short term price channel. And now my setup is here and I didn't take this trade because I didn't like that long candle because the three to one, let's go ahead and do it. The three to one is way up here and now you have to go back in history and say has it been has three to one on the 60 ever hit 60 dollars and i'm going back i'm going back and going back in the last let's see what that uh okay that blue line is 59.85 so yeah it got close 59.85 so 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 that that three to one would have been good if you have the patience for the wait out the long trade, that would have also paid off. But now we have this, it came up in the scanner fresh. So we now have a fresh scan. So we're going to go off this high and this right here. Now, what's the danger here? The danger is this is a doji or actually a, uh, it's a hammer, but it's a hammer on the top side of the short term cycle. And the stochastic is already running pretty high. So we're going to be we're going to be this, this will be a high risk because we don't have uh, we it's going to be a high risk because it's going to get triggered and maybe even get stepped out and I also notice I already have one day trade against uh, gold I messed up on the order ticket on gold and I got in and out in the same day and now I have to wait five business days and I think it occurred on Friday so this will not come off. The, that, that demerit will not come down until next Thursday. So I've got to be a little bit more careful to do that. To avoid that, just set up your trade as is, but then put a put a temporary stop down here to avoid the day trader rules. And if the order triggers, then in, then now if the order triggers and comes down here, then you're stuck and you have you're going to have to really hold on to this. Yeah, that is a little bit on the gamble side. Again, I am a risk taker, and the risk taking has paid off very well for me. It might not pay off well for you, and might not pay off well for other traders. So everyone's going to have to make their own judgment call. This here is not a bad stop. I just don't want to get another hit with another brown tripper. That's my problem. All right. So enough said. Let's go look at the options and. The so oh, it's 117, 90 days out. And uh, quickly, I can see we are okay. We are okay. We have we have lots of high volume. And the spread's 10 cents. It's 395. 
We are 512. This is going to be our is going to be our contract right there. And we're going to be doing one contract on this. So the one contract here at the 395. Uh, also two oh on the 30 delta, dollar twenty-five. The dollar twenty-five goes into three goes almost four times. Uh yeah, yeah, we can we can squeeze four contracts here at this at the strike price of 55 with 34 delta. So that said, now I have to see, do I have any notes here to say that Verizon owes me any money? And it does not. This is going to be a nice clean trade. And uh, let's see, we're going to take that out. That was my, that was, uh, I do drawing lines for expirations. Um, also to, I might go look at the 34, 34. Now, everybody's like, oh, no, it's shorter than 90. Yes, it is. It's shorter than 90, but let's look at the advantage of it. The shorter than 90, a 25 delta is 44 cents. That means I will be able to get, pick up approximately maybe as much as 12 contracts. Let's round it off to 10, 10 contracts, and it would be, it would be 250 round up delta but the only problem here is that the ab is right at the 10 percent. i don't like that i like to have a little bit more i would like to have this at 41 cents so it'd be only a so be, this here 10 percent of 44 is four cents and it spreads four cents so that's going to be also in that that, that that thinking about that this is not bad 145 it's approximately uh three contracts Three contracts, 58 delta, good heavy volume, and an open interest. And here's another thing here. Look at all the heavy money that's here. So for this price, for these prices to start making any value to all these traders who are sitting here in the high open interest starting at $55 strike, this is not bad. 52.5, get three contracts, and because this doesn't owe me any money, my objective will be $511. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that arbitrary decision that we did it. We analyzed it. The spread is, uh, oh, it's 14 cents. Again, we're back to that 10% rule. Uh, that, that hurts. That hurts. So what happens now is um, we have to make another choice. Are we going to go ahead and push the envelope for the 10%? And if we do, we might as well just go with the uh, go with the 25 delta because that's going to give us a whole mess of contracts. Let's do it. Let's bring it up. So we want we want 10% of our capital, which is 511, divided by the potential of 44 cents. Uh, divide that by 100. Apologize. There we go. That's 11.6 contracts. So I would be looking at 11 contracts. So 11 contracts. Times the times the twenty five delta. So we'll just go eleven times twenty five delta, and that comes out to a two point seventy five delta. So we we'll, you know in that round. Oh man, this 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 this, this starts then. This is where you start going like oh yeah, and and no, this is not bad. I mean fifty eight delta with three contracts. The other thing too is the the the, the ATR is. It is almost 90 cents. So let's go ahead and do that. So 1100 divided by 0.90 is, no, 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 I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want an object, we're looking to make a profit of 511. It's 567 days. That is not going to well. Because I have a calculator, I have a calculator, but it's a little complicated. I really don't, I don't. Bring it up because I get into a lot of heavy discussion there. So let's keep it simple. Uh, we'll go. Let's do it this way. Here's here's another way of doing this too. You go 0.44 times your hundred times eleven. It's going to cost four hundred eighty-four dollars. One point forty-five times a hundred times three contracts. 435. So here is a way this is this could be your this this would be the 
the uh, tiebreaker. The tiebreaker would be is how much money we're going to put out. So we'll go ahead and 435. So we're going to go. We are going to go with this one after all, because it's it's going to it's going to be fifty dollars less if I lose. I lose. I will. I will save fifty dollars if I get a hundred percent stop out, which technically should not happen. All right. So uh, yeah, we're going to go with the uh, we'll go with the shorter time frame. And I know everybody's going like, oh wow. Well, I've had good experiences with the shorter time frame. Get in, get out, get done. All right. So uh, oh they, oh that's what the ATR. Sorry, I did the ATR wrong. We're getting in here. Now we'll start with our entry at 5320 to 53.22 is the high. So that's going to be 53. That's, I round up to the nickels, 53.25. And then the low is 52.35. And now I have my three to one. And now I have my target is $56. Okay, so ATR wise. So what we do is go $56 minus the 53.25. Divide that by the eight, eight by the ninety cents. That's what I meant to do earlier. We're looking at a possibility that we can be out of this trade in three days. That's what I'm looking for. I want to be out of this trade. And that's in a perfect world. According to one instructor at OTA, if I go two times the three, I should be out of the trade in six days. So, moving forward, now we'll go ahead and get our data set up. So, Ryzen. And uh, today I put in today's date when I did the work. It is my it is my channel breakout five with a candle candle risk three to one open market. That means they didn't come off my lost leaders list. I put in the stochastic. Stochastics is running. This is the thing that is going to concern me. The stochastic is already running at ninety eight point five, and that is really against my rules yeah yeah another discovery here stochastics is 89.5 but demonstrations and this is the way you learn you, 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 you know but look where the atr at rsi is at and i know merlin doesn't care for for the atr uh, rsi but it's it is used by a lot of stand, standards and um it's not a perfect indicator uh, the volume on this was how much? How much was our volume on Verizon? 54.6. 54.6. This I do put in here. And my entry is the uh, 53.25. Then we're going to be looking at getting three contracts. We are doing the, we are doing the January after all. And in the January, we are uh, wrong one. The January is uh, 52.5. And guess what? I've been here before, 52.5. Delta 23, it was Delta 23 when I was visited last time. Now it's, 50. Now it's 58. That's good. Uh, this has to do with the calculator. So I, I'm going to be, I'm going to have to pass all this up because there's, it's going to take, that's going to take a lot more time. So I'm going to put X's in front, making that the data was not available. And that's how I know that this, this data cannot be utilized. And also I can project how much I'm going to possibly lose. And now our stop is, it is last bar low. And it's uh, 50, 52.35. So this is now 52.35, and my target is 56. Okay, and then I will go ahead and capture all that, copy it, bring it down, and now we'll go to market. So now we'll go back to our options. We are going through the 52, so with right here, right click, buy customs with stop. We're buying three contracts. We are going at market. We are going GTC. We're going to the condition. This is the order plus rules. There's a Verizon drops in, but we're now going on the entry on the high side. And the entry is 53.25. Okay. Then our stop 
is 52.35, and then our other stop is target. And now I have set and forget. And I send it and read the, read the instructions so that I don't get in trouble like I did the other day with gold. 53.25 entry, sell at or below 53 to 52, or sell at or above 56. Yeah, that's good. Drop in my notes. I said to keep my notes and send it. And order is away. And now we'll see over here and we'll come here and turn on our order show on the chart. And there it is. Another thing, too, it's also a good habit of checking to make sure that your order looks correct. All right. That is it. I thank you very much for watching this uh, setup for Verizon. And uh, we'll see how next week goes, and uh, we'll see where else. But thank you very much for stopping by and checking it out. Bye-bye.